Mr. President, will you commit to a debate with former President Trump? It depends on his behavior. A few moments later. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. And since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. Well, 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 things are starting to heat up. Joe Biden comes out being super feisty and challenges Donald Trump to debate, something that obviously should be happening in the first place. But for months now, Joe Biden has been dragging his feet. Will he do it? Will he not do it? Oh, it depends on how Donald Trump acts. But now finally confirming at least two debates, possibly a third in the works. And what I want to point out there about that announcement is, did you see how many cuts there were? I can't imagine the film crew sat in there saying, please, Joe, just get the words out. Can you please talk for five seconds and then we'll splice it all together? Okay, good, go. <laughs> and also notice the jab that Joe Biden gave to Trump there. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. Yeah, you know that because you planned it that way. Because remember, all your prosecutors met at the White House before all these charges were brought against Donald Trump. So yeah, he is free on Wednesdays, okay? But what I want to focus on now, of course, is Donald Trump's blistering response over here on Truth Social. As you can see, Crooked Joe Biden is the worst debater I have ever faced. He can't put two sentences together. Crooked is also the worst president in the history of the United States by far. It's time for a debate so that he can explain to the American people his highly destructive open border policy, new and ridiculous EV mandates, the allowance of crushing inflation, high taxes, and his really weak foreign policy, which is allowing the world to catch on fire. I am ready and willing to debate Crooked Joe at the two proposed times in June and September. I would strongly recommend more than two debates and, for excitement purposes, a very large venue. Although Biden is supposedly afraid of crowds, that's only because he doesn't get them. <laughs> Just tell me when I'll be there. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> I know that's probably the worst Trump impression you have ever heard, but you know what? I'm proud of it. <laughs> So yes, why is Joe Biden actually deciding to debate now at this point in time? Well, could it have anything to do, of course, with his lagging popularity? You have, of course, trouble with Israel in the Middle East. How never Trump or donors are considering abandoning Biden because of his betrayal of Israel and doing the unthinkable in 2024, <laughs> all right? So this article, of course, is all about those big ticket donors who normally give to Republicans who actually gave to Joe Biden because they are never Trumpers and they thought Joe Biden was going to be the adult in the room. However, now, given his stance, on Israel, they're saying, we're cutting off that funding, right? And even though they may not vote for Donald Trump, they are definitely done giving money to Biden, which of course is a rather large hit. So Joe Biden, of course, as I've mentioned before, is trying to court both sides. The radical leftists who for some reason love Hamas, but also Israel. He's trying to walk that fine line and nobody is happy over this. But also the lawfare against Donald Trump is not going as planned either. You can say multitudes, you despise Bill. Donald Trump or you want to vote for him. He's the defendant. He's an American citizen on trial. This witness is perfect for Todd Blanche. And all the people, yeah. you know, second guessing each and every question, sit down, get your popcorn out, <laughs> let Mr. Blanche do his job. He's, and, and the judge will, will charge this jury, Jake, that if a witness has a bias uh, or skin in the game, you take that testimony with caution. You know, the witness is supposed to say, they robbed the bank, they drove the car, it was blue, and it was raining out. Not... I want him in jail. I got a little silly little T-shirt on. This Cohen is reprehensible. So Cohen uh, is asked if he loves being on TV. He says yes, but more so when he was on TV on Trump's behalf. Less now. Um, Blanche confirms with Cohen he did not meet with the Manhattan DA's office between such and such dates. Cohen's manner is still very even, uh, we're told. Would you just rest your case if you were the defense? The prosecution, let's assume they finish uh, their case whenever this cross-examination's over uh, and there's a redirect, et cetera, et cetera, and the prosecution says, okay, the prosecution rests. Mm -hmm. Would you, if you were Todd Blanche, say, well, we rest too. Like, they, they, didn't prove, they didn't meet their burden. I think there's a good argument in favor of doing that. I mean, at this point, unless they really think that there's something that comes out from Michael Cohn's testimony, um, I think at this point there would be a strong argument for the defense to just stand up and say, look, the prosecution hasn't met its burden in this case. Here's all the things that they have to prove. They haven't gotten there, and it's time for everybody to go home. I think that, I don't know that they'll do that, but I think there's an argument in favor of it's that. It's kind of a baller move when defense attorneys do that, but I wonder, would this client accept that? He likes people fighting for them. You know that better than I do. I, 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 I do, and, and, you know, I think uh, he'd like to push, push, push and get as many witnesses on as he can. 
Uh, but I think this strategy is probably right. You know, this case hasn't gone in the way I think it was billed to go in. So uh, as the as the days go on and this case looks weaker and weaker, uh, I think it, it's probably uh, less that they have to put on for defense. Before we continue, I do want to mention what are you going to do with your dollar? Joe Biden, of course, is printing out more cash than ever, causing massive inflation and devaluation of our currency. So how can you protect your investments? Well, you can go to Genesis Gold Group and convert your 401k or IRA into a gold-backed retirement account. And of course, you can access them by going to angryteachergold.com or by calling 1-800-200-4653 to take control of your future future. Get back on the gold standard, get gold back securities, protect your dollar. And by the way, Genesis Gold Group is a faith-based organization, so you can feel confident that you are not supporting a woke organization. Let's get back into it. So there you have it, Jake Tapper on CNN, hosting a whole bunch of attorneys here, and all of them are saying the same thing. Yeah, it seems like the prosecution has not made their case. Michael Cohen is a terrible witness, and the defense can basically just rest and say, yeah, we're done. They have not met their burden of proof to go ahead and convict Donald Trump. So yeah, not looking very good on the lawfare front. Thank goodness for that, right? But also, there's the polling. For the past couple of days, as I've said, for the past couple of months, mm -hmm. That And I believe now that there is a conspiracy, and I do believe in conspiracies. I think psychiatrists yeah. in blue states oh. have conspired with the New York Times Siena pollsters <laughs> and said, listen, we'll split the profits on psychiatric care if you guys will, will, will uh, have the craziest methodology, which they always have. Uh, maybe they're trying to make up for 20 when they skewed in Biden's direction by about four or five points. But every one of these New York Times Siena polls have been wildly skewed. And by the way, people are calling and going, oh, this is just a reaction to one poll. No, you can go back. You can look at the tape. We do this every time a New York Times Siena poll comes out. It's always an outlier. And the New York Times always gets 15 or 16 articles out mm -hmm. of them that everybody rushes to because it says Earth ends at five o'clock. Uh, you know, go hit link at New York Times 15 times. And they keep writing articles about it. There are, and NPR has, has, has found some of these voters that said, well, you know, a voter for Biden before, but, and they said, but wait, this guy, we checked the voting rolls, he's never voted. Other news organizations have like three, four more examples, not just of people in the surveys, but yeah. people the New York Times quoted in their articles of, well, here's one of many people that we interviewed that said he's disillusioned and is going to vote for Trump. No record of them voting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know. Um, Are you I, feeling a, something? Yeah. Well, I'm feeling that, that I'm feeling like that there's say? a. I think sometimes, uh, as a general matter, there's maybe a little bit of an over reliance on voters telling the truth about things in general. I hate to say it. Um, reporters find this occasionally that liar. The reporters lie. Here's what I'd say about this about this poll. Um, if I were to ask you this question, Joe, um, do you know anybody on either side who? Uh, who doesn't think that it's the case that of the battleground states that Joe Biden is stronger in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin than he is in uh, Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia? Uh, it sounds about right. Yeah, I've seen I, some polls that show that Georgia is very close. Greg Bluestein actually had an article that also not, says I'm not, I'm not that the poll close. is wildly I'm not, off. I'm not saying it's not close. I'm not going to carry water for the New York Times or for the methodology of this poll. I, I'll keep going back to a thing that I try, try to say every time we talk about these things, which is that I'm really interested, and I know you know this, is like, what are the polls telling us directionally about the race? I understand. It's, there's a difference, though, with the New York Times I, Siena poll, and you know this. I, I am, it's given disproportionate impact. I understand. It, uh, this year, this cycle, it is skewed wildly and yes. in Donald Trump's and, direction. Hold on. Yeah. And the New York Times feasts on it with clickbait stories like a dozen at a time. And and I and, and what I'm trying to focus on is what I think people should pay attention to. So yes, there you have it. Joe Scarborough in complete meltdown over the Trump polling numbers coming out from the New York Times that showed Donald Trump winning in Nevada by 13, which of course is an astounding number. I did a story on that. I mentioned, yeah, this is possibly an outlier, but Joe, of course, is very upset calling out the New York Times, right? They're on your side, Joe. Why don't you believe them? <laughs>
So when you put all of that together, you, of course, have Joe Biden losing support. You have Joe Biden's lawfare efforts not going according to plan. When you have the polls not backing up Joe Biden, of course, he now has to come out and acquiesce to the debates. The very same way that Katie Hobbs decided, hey, I'm not going to go ahead and debate Carrie Lake. Now, a lot of people would say, hold on, that's a double standard because Donald Trump refused to debate any of his opponents. That's because he was so far ahead. When you are up by 30, 40 points, why even bother? You know you are the presumptive nominee so who cares and obviously all of the primaries backed that up now over here joe biden like i mentioned he was going to try the same thing but because of his lack of popularity and lagging poll numbers all right he or his team feels he has to actually do this and they better get those drugs ready to pump into his veins because he needs to be coherent on those nights in june and september <laughs> so as usual thank you for watching don't forget to like share comment subscribe and stay safe out there people because they're coming after you